Okay. Down through the years, God's been good to me. Down through the years, God's been good to me. Down through the years, oh yeah, God's been good to me. I tell you, God's really been good to me all of my life. Yes, God's been good to me all of my life. God's been good to me all of my life. Oh, yeah. Then the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Command the priests who bear the ark of the testimony to come up from Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come up from the Jordan. And it came to pass when the priests who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord, had come from the midst of Jordan. And the soles of the priest's feet touched the dry land, that the waters of Jordan returned to their place and overflowed all the banks as before. Now the people came up from Jordan on the 10th day of the first month, and they camped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And these 12 stones, which they took out of Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. Then he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What are these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan before you until you had crossed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed over, that all the peoples of the earth may know the hand of the Lord that is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. And I've read Joshua chapter 4, verses 15 through 24. May the Lord have the blessing and adhere to the reading of his word and applications of our souls. Shall we pray? Most gracious and eternal Father God, as again, our Father, we come to you once again, our Father, just to say thank you. Thank you, dear Lord, for this another day, another Sunday. Most of all, we thank you, our Father, for our health and strength once again, our Father, that you've given us, our Father. Father, be with us today, our Father, as we go on this day, our Father, submit ourselves to thee, our Father. Our Father, we ask you to go on those, our Father, who are sick and shut in at this time. We ask you to touch their bodies right now, Father, that they may be here. And dear Lord, we look on those who are with COVID-19. We ask you to look on them the most special way, dear Heavenly Father, is that we. Now, Lord, we ask you to follow look down on those who are bereaved at this time, our Father. Look down on the bereaved family here, there, and everywhere, our Father. Touch them in the name of Jesus, our Father. Father, let them know, our Father, we all must leave here one day, our Father. We don't know when or where, our Father, but we must leave here. And must know who you are, our Father, for that day come, our Father. We ask you, Father, we trust in you, Father, that everything is going fine for those, our Father, this time. And dear Lord, strengthen the various churches that are open and various things here, our Father. We need thee at this time, our Father. We need thee every day and every hour, Father. Father God, this is my prayer this morning. We ask all these blessings in thy Son, in Jesus' name, for Christ's sake. We do pray, we do ask. Amen. 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 Um, Sister Samuel, you do me a favor. I don't see the person that's supposed to read the history and the church covenant. And while I'm waiting on that, uh, you to get that together. If you have it on your program, I will go through greetings from the church. A Shepherd Ministries Baptist Church. This is our first church anniversary. Oh, can you say And this? yes. You said to me the church. I it's don't... in the program. You have the church program? Should be in there. Okay. Well, okay. Let me go on with the church 
welcome. Greetings from the church. Um, we bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Shepherd Ministry Baptist Church welcome you to our first anniversary of the church services. We here at this branch of Zion have taught and preached the unmitigated truth of God's word for the past year and will continue to do so for generations to come. Shepherd Ministries Baptist Church, welcome everyone to our first church anniversary. We are honored to have you come and worship with us today on this glorious occasion as we reflect on the past year of how God has brought us and doing so for future generations will ask what mean these stones? And that is Joshua 4 and 21. And a shepherd ministry began his journey in faith and trust in God for his leadership and guidance as he is the way, the truth, and the life. Shepherd ministry understand and recognize that Christ is the head of the church and the pastor is the under shepherd and takes me her orders from Jesus Christ. It is our faith and trust in God that we have come thus far and through his grace, we will continue being the church that he has ordained us to be. The church was the heart of a champion in Christ, Dr. Willie White, the pastor. Right. Okay. So, did you find it? Yes, did you find it? Did you find it? Uh, hold on one second for me. Hold on one second. Give me one second. Um, as we are doing this, let me just say this again. I welcome all of you to our church's first anniversary. And we are just excited to be here because we understand that this is a faith walk. It is not for the faint of heart because in this journey, we are going to be tested by Satan. And he will uh, overcome us if we don't have the walk of faith. If you don't have it, I, I'll read it. I have it. Give me just one second. Bear with me one second, please. Uh, and if we have come this far and we have been on this journey for a long time, at least I have, and I'm not tired yet to continue to carry on and we'll continue to carry on. And it was important, I feel, that for the younger generation that's going to come behind us uh, to know where this church came from and how it was founded and upon who, and as a faith, just like Christ set up his, his church, uh, when he asked Peter, who do we say he was? Peter said, thou art the Christ. And he told him, on the profession of your faith, I will build my church, and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And that was that faith. When I answered the call to they say yes and preach the gospel, because I answered to teach a long time ago, but I had some faith failures when he said, I want you to preach my gospel. I had some faith failures. I was afraid of the fact that I wasn't 25 and I was a woman. When they first came, they said, well, you know, women are looked down upon and preaching the gospel. So he, he let me go ahead on. And when he came the second time, I said yes, and we've been walking this road ever since, you know, and it's been a little over two years now, and we're going to continue, and, and as I always tell them, don't think I'm leaving here, going home to glory, not right away. I'm going, but I'm not in no hurry to get there. He have kept me for the last 40 years after many heart attacks. You've answered my prayer. My grandson 
is 30. And he was just a baby, just been born. And I asked him, let me see him get to be gone and on his own. My son, uh, he has been healed of his accident. And now he's on his own, working and doing well. So God answers prayer. And I'm saying all that to say that when you commit yourself to Christ, when you can go to him and pray, he certainly will answer your prayer. And when you make him a promise that if he do this for you, you will do this. God going to keep his end of the bargain. It's up to us to keep our end of the bargain. And we, and if you study the scripture and the Old Testament, you see that God always kept his end of his covenant agreement with them. They failed, but he loved them so much. He would always forgive them when they would repent. Are you ready, Sister Samuel? Yes, Sam. Uh, the covenant and the church history. This is the church covenant. Okay. Having been led as we believe by the spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our savior. And on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy ghost. We do now in the presence of God's angels and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into this covenant with one another as one holy in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love and to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promise, to, to promise in prosperity and spirituality, to sustain in worship, ordinances, disciplines, and doctrine to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout all nations. We engage to maintain family and through the devotion, to regularly educate our children to seek the salvation of our kindreds and acquaintances, to walk so respectfully in the world, to be just, in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplify in our, bear with me one second, in deportment to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to always to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to walk over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and contemplation courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church, whereas we can carry out the spirit and the covenant of the principle of God's word. Amen. 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 One second. Is that Miss LeClaire? I thought I heard her, but I don't see her. No, it was somebody else. She didn't make it because she actually would have had to be let in. Okay, and now we need to read the church history. Yes, ma'am, if you don't mind. Eighteenth, two thousand and eighteen, and just bear me one second because I am reading from the computer. So just bear me one second here. God spoke to Doctor White, the founding pastor of this church, and said, "Go and preach my gospel." 
This time she said yes to the call. Her first summer was faith via online technology. On May 19, 2019, Dr. White and those other founding members met in the home of Terry White to form the church where the gospel would be taught and preached. There was a delay. However, Dr. White continued organizing the church legally with the necessary government agencies during the delay. She continued teaching Sunday school at the Northwest Unity Baptist Church, which she has been teaching for many years under the leadership of Pastor Reverend Dr. Oscar W. King III. During the delay, God spoke to Dr. White and said, go to YouTube and begin proclaiming the word. She was obedient to his call. In April 2020, Dr. White began her ministry via YouTube, after which the church came forth with the name Shepherd Ministry Baptist Church. Official services began the fourth Sunday, May 24, 2020. She was licensed and ordained Sunday, December 6, 2020, by Reverend Jacqueline Rose, pastor of New Life Christian Ministries. Shepherd Ministries' mission is to teach and preach God's word and is dedicated to sharing God's word the world over, as this is a Christian teaching ministry. Shepherd Ministry was founded on the truth of God's word. We are standing firm on the truth of God's word and will proclaim the truth of God's word. Shepherd Ministries will carry out the activities recorded in Arts, I'm sorry, in Acts 2, 42, 47, to strengthen our community based on love and fellowship, demonstrating the love of God to our fellow, to our fellow men. Shepherd Ministries, Shepherd Ministries is a disciple-making church. In obedience to Christ, in obedience, great commission recorded in Matthew 28, 19, 20. Teaching and preaching the unmitigable truth of God's word. Shepherd Ministries founder and pastor, Reverend Dr. Willie B. White, a woman of God, called by God to proclaim his word to both the saved and unsaved. Since its inception, Shepherd Ministries has visible presence worldwide in such places, India, Ghana, West Africa, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Nairobi, Kenya, and Ghana, West Africa, and national levels, AIDS as a result of the churches proclaiming the truth. She has been invited to carry out a two-week revival in Kenya. Shepherd Ministries affiliates are the Metropolitan District Congress of Christian Education, which is METSI, of course, Wolverine State Congress of Christian Education, Metropolitan Women's Auxiliary, Women's Group, the National Baptist Women's Auxiliary, and the Detroit Prayer Canopy Group. Dr. White is a longtime instructor in METSI and Wolverine State Congress of Christian Education and has taught in BME State Congress of Christian Education. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are quite welcome. So. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say uh, congratulations in your teaching and your preaching. Um, I can say that even being taught up under your leadership as a teacher, it has actually reformed me. And I guess with this new technology is also teaching me to kind of stay on top of my A, a game. I should have printed out the program, but I didn't, but I was still able to carry out, you know, God's mission. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Yes.
the Reverend Bird, we are you're up, and I, all right, I thank you so much again for all of your attendance, Reverend Bird. You're gonna Amen. give us a word of prayer. You're gonna take us to the throne of grace. Amen. As we all come together, gathered uh, our thoughts to our minds, our hearts to our wills. Our Father and our God, we come before you, O oh God, on this day. When it's just the rising on to the brand new day that you have uh, created for us. Accounting upon your mercy and your grace. Father, we are just so thankful to be in your presence. And Father, right now, as we gather together, assembled in your presence, look down from heaven and anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Father, we just thank you for your, 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 your angel, messenger, this out. That on this day that we would have the opportunity to celebrate one year anniversary. And Father, for every head that is bowed here today, I know there's someone that is being held up in position for the favor of your Holy Spirit to be uplifting and encouraging. Father, as you spoke the word and it became form and became this, uh, this life in which we walk in. Father, we are so thankful. We're so thankful that, you no, know, as we accept and receive the love that stands beside us and the love in which you have placed in us, we are so especially thankful for the love that went before us in our spirit. So, Father, as, as we join together right now, we ask that you encamp your, your love around all those and all those petitions of, of, of thought. For all those that are sick among us, those that are worldwide, Father, we just uh, pray that the word in which we received in, in Bible study that we'll carry on and add on to through the message that will be sent from on high on this morning. Father, anoint us, set us afire with that zeal to share your word and share your love. Father, touch this ministry. Touch all those that that, that are, are reaching in and, and, and come and, and streaming up from out. Touch, heal, seal, and deliver all those that are oppressed, downtrodden, or sick. Uplift and encamp your angels all around Dr. White of this ministry. And Father, we give you all the praise, all the honor. And all the glory. And let our yes and our amen be on all our board. Amen. 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 amen and amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, I'd like to thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to participate. Um, of course, you know, Dr. Uh, King sends uh, his, uh, uh, his well wishes on this, your first anniversary. And the allotment of some Northwest unity goes up in your favor, and we hold you up in prayer and the continuous desire. I accept and tell uh, tell him I, if I call him Oscar, I don't want the world to know that I'm being disrespectful. But that's our our back and forth, <laughs> you know. Amen. Tell him I love him too, and he should have showed up. <laughs> he had to do nothing but just plug in. So he had no excuse. He don't have to travel. You know, God made technology so that you can just plug in and keep it moving. But that's all right. <laughs> but I thank you for your presence. And I, I see that Pastor Rose has just joined us. And I want to say thank you all. We are getting into the words of encouragement. And, and I, I would like for her, if she would, I know she has to get to her pulpit. And if she uh, go first and have some words of encouragement, if any of the rest of you might want to unmute your mic and have some words of encouragement. You know, like I told you earlier, I, this is first and I really don't know what all I feel. And when I get through, I'm going in my bedroom and cry a little bit. <laughs> okay, so uh, Pastor Rose, if, if you are ready with your words of encouragement, I do have some others that I don't have on, but if you're here, I'll let you go on, Dr. Pastor Rose. She's connecting. She's getting it together. Good 
Okay, and you and you unmuted, Pastor Rose. Okay. We can't hear you. She's, yeah, I see your lips moving, but we can't hear you. Hello. Hello. I now can hear you. Hi, Dr. White. Yes, ma'am. I'm Pastor Rhodes. Okay, go ahead. Am I can... on? Yes, you are. On. Okay. okay. Is it my turn? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Jacqueline Rhodes. And I want to offer these words of encouragement to you, Dr. White, on your first anniversary. Isaiah 55, 4 says, indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the people. Speaking about David. And then the question was asked about David. Pardon me. What shall I do? No, just keep talking. You're good. Okay. The question was asked about David. Why did God choose him to be a leader? God said because he knew that David would do what he, God, asked of him. I believe this about you, Dr. White, that God chose you because he could count on you to do what he asked of you. And not only are you obedient to God, Dr. White, but you have many other leadership qualities. And I will name three as I seek to give you encouragement because being a pastor is not easy, mm -hmm. but it is so fulfilling. Yes, it is. <laughs> One, you are committed and accountable. You will not take on a task unless you know you are able to accomplish its goal. You work hard 
and will always get the job done without excuses. That is a wonderful leadership quality. Number two, Dr. White, you have a heart to serve. In other words, you, uh, among uh, many church leaders, have a servant heart, which will enable you to influence within your membership and also be a team-oriented person and pastor. Thirdly, and most importantly, Dr. White, you demonstrate godly character and adheres to godly principles. I know that about you. And you are one of those church leaders who seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And that is a most wonderful leadership quality in a pastor. And as I close out, Dr. White, I want you to remember these words. This is Rhema words for you. Okay. Write them down. Okay. God gave the, this to me as I was working on um, the message for you, Dr. White. Mm -hmm. God has called you to an incredible purpose and he believes in you. Aren't, isn't that wonderful? Yes, it I is. I say to the audience that God said about Dr. White. And Dr. White, thank you. And I, I know that your first anniversary will be successful because you are a successful and victorious person. Mm -hmm. amen. 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 And amen 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 okay if there's anybody else would like to have some words just open your mic and we'll hear them dr white i hope that you will continue on this journey with your hand to the lord i'm just so delightful to see how you have grown and how you have helped other people to grow closer to the Lord. And I just wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Audrey Mines. Thank you. Dr. Anyone? White. Yes. Excuse me, I mm -hmm. have to leave. Yes, I understand. You have to get to your, your church and I Appreciate you once again, Pastor Rose, for coming and sharing in, in this anniversary. It makes me feel uplifted. That's a, that is yeah. a word. And I'm just so appreciative. And not only just to you, but you took time out of your schedule. You have to get to your church. And I know that you are part of meeting in person. And you have to travel. And I appreciate you taking the time out and said, I'm gonna come and give you some words of encouragement because this, yes, this is a journey. And sometimes you're gonna have to walk by yourself, but you will not be alone because I know that God is with us as we take this journey. And again, thank Amen. you. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, thank yes. you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Andrea? No, you're being shy. Yes, hi, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> Thank you for welcoming, welcoming me. Um, congratulations on your first year anniversary. Um, and thank you for being a praying woman as well. Um, and may God continue to bless you with many more years um, ahead. Mm -hmm. well, thank you, all right. I see somebody else that has a hand up. If you do, you just unmute your mic and they, I have a couple more who couldn't be here. They wrote them, them for me. I won't read them all, but uh, I'll just read part of them. Uh, one of them is a regular attending Bible study, Reverend Henry Yeagers. And I met him through uh, uh, social media. And then we wrote, and he says, 
well, he, how he first met me and we were starting our Sunday school. He was starting his Sunday school by the time I was starting the church. And he's an ordained pastor with the Evangelical Free Church of Canada. And it was a time in his life that he would be memorable. And he uh, gave me these words. He said, although as I thought about what I would share, my thoughts came to you, Acts chapter four, Acts two, and verses 4, 43 to 47. And he said, I would like for you to share these with you. And they steadfastly continued in prayer and the apostles doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayer. And fear came upon every soul and as many wonders and signs were done that the apostles um, he says something about leave the meeting. Thank you. Did you hear it? And fear came upon them, and many of wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together, and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, and every man at, at need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking of bread from house to house. Did they eat meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily as such as should be saved. And I'll close out, he said this. I pray that these brief words will be a great encouragement to each of you as you go forth, expecting God to do great things for you and your congregation. May it be so. And as Pastor White will say, amen and amen. Then we have a, a long one from Reverend Pastor Bushy from over in uh, Guyana, West Africa. He sent me uh, words of greeting for me and the church and saying he, he believes and he prays that we will continue in God's salvation and prayer upon this church as we grow and the grace and the knowledge of God as we continue to proclaim the truth of God's word the world over. And they tunes in to our messages uh, sometimes via YouTube. And he is praying that we, we have grown in our relationship. He is church in our church. And he have grown in their church planning. He expects with God's hand upon this church, we'll go and do the same thing. And he, uh, he's joining with us and prays and, and that God had brought us thus far in one year and praying that he'll continue to walk with us as we go forth in the name of Jesus. And that was from Reverend Roger Bushy from the fellowship that were over in Ghana, West Africa. Okay, as we move on in the service and we will have a song by uh, Deacon Samuel and then we'll get on into the service as uh, I try not to keep you too long. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Please walk with me. While I'm on this Jesus journey. I want you, Jesus, to walk with me. Be my friend, Lord. Please be my friend. Be my friend, Lord. Be my friend. While I'm on this Jesus journey, I want you to be my, be my friend. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Please walk with me. While I'm on this teacher's journey, I 
want you, Jesus, to walk with me. Amen and amen. Now amen. It, is, it is my time. And I tell you, it is my time. And the message this morning is, he has anointed me to preach the gospel. All right. It's coming out of Luke 4.18. And I will read that scripture. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm -hmm. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. He pre to preach deliverance to the captive, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And mm -hmm. keeping with our theme today of what mean these stones, hmm. I tried to come up with a, a message that would align with my theme, and this is what I came up with. And looking over the church's history of how I accepted the call and how uh, it was the, the first call, I, I, I tried to give him, I acted like Moses, tried to give him an excuse, and he <laughs> will always give me an answer. But he kept on working with me and I kept going and going and studying and getting prepared. But then and I look at it back through my backward telescopic lens, I could see that his hand was on me. He knew when he called me the first time that I wasn't ready, quite ready in my mind. And he kept me working to get more knowledge and to keep getting closer to him. So when he called me and told me, I want you to preach my gospel the second time, I said, yes, and with the fire that I was determined, I was not going to let nothing turn me around because of what somebody else said or what, whatever. I was going to carry out that assignment. And doing so, we have made it one year to celebrate and to take time and to look back over how he brought us one year of preaching and when he told me he said I want you to go to YouTube God I had no idea about a pandemic and that he would close up the churches and open up technology so we could reach around the world see right. what my point is if we just be obedient to God's call and commit ourselves to doing what he want us to do he already had the provision made and the way made for us to do that. Right. So, and I'm saying, taking time to say this. So the, all of the, the younger group that's gonna come behind me on shepherd ministry, they will know just like when they did when the young nation of Israel crossed over the Jordan and Joshua said, I want you to build, take me 12 stones as a mm -hmm. memorial. So when that young future generation come and ask the question, what is the meaning of these stones? What mean these stones? They'll be able to tell them how the nation of Israel was brought out of slavery. They crossed the Red Sea. God opened up a, a highway in the middle of the Red Sea and how he rolled back the waters of the Jordan River and brought them across. So when the young generation who will be a part of Shepherd Ministries can look back over and back and go back to 2019 and 20 and say, yes, we started here at a humble beginning, but look where we are now because the hand of God is moving us. It's not because of the under shepherd, because I am just the under shepherd, but the I, I answered and said, yes. And he said, I want you to go forward. And she took the Helm the mantle and said, Yes, I am gone. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to look back over their history. And just as we, as a nation of African Americans, can look back over our history, how we come out of slavery to where we are today. So the younger generation of this church will look back and see how we come 
from our humble beginnings because in my meditation and prayer time, I asked God for three, four things. To give me the wisdom and the humbleness to walk with him regardless of how bad it looked. Then to grow this church spiritually, financially, and numerically. And I, and I can tell you today, he has done just that because right. we have a presence around the world in Tuzan. Our time is different in mm -hmm. some parts, but still, they find a way to get in and get me back messages of how they, and I don't take the credit for myself. I give it all to God. And he says, because I have committed myself to preaching the gospel of Christ. See, when the hand of God, I won't be long, <laughs> is on you and you obey to do what he called you to do. All right. He will elevate, he will send his message because he knew he knows the heart of every one of his people that he called. He knows their willingness to be obedient and to humble thou say. So that being said, let's go back to our scripture. And I'm like I said, it won't be long. He have been anointed and he preached the gospel. Who am I going to be talking to? They are the poor in spirit. I'm supposed to give them deliverance to the captive. I'm supposed to preach, preach to the broken heart. I want to preach to those who are recovering sight of the blind. Then I'm told me to preach to those and set them at liberty who have been bruised. Let me just analyze who, why these people are classified as they are. Well, the poor are those who are poor in spirit because they have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The poor are those who fear that they are destined to remain alienated from God, the Father, and their sins are too great and they have no hope of gaining the richness of salvation that is provided through Jesus Christ. But let me just tell them, you do not have to remain in that state of dependency on Satan and his lives. Because Jesus Christ is that ticket to riches that only the Savior can give. And I again encourage you, accept Jesus Christ as your, as your Savior. Because he's paid your sin debt. That's what they have to do. And you, your spirit, you become rich in your spirit through the acceptance of Jesus Christ. The captives are those persons who have rejected the spiritual invitation from God to come to his spiritual feast and eat and drink from a fountain that never runs dry. The captives are those who are still bound by sin and Satan jail, where Satan himself is their warden. Fear and intimidation are the security guard, preventing them from seeing the light of Christ as Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Right. Jesus Christ is that get out of jail, Paul. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ paid humanity's sin debt. And doing so, he provided salvation for all who believe. So I can say today to the captives, accept Jesus Christ, and you will no longer be held captive to Satan and sin. Jesus paid it all over some 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. But thank God he didn't stay dead in the grave. He got up that Sunday morning. Yes. With all power, not some, but all power in his hand. So all I'm saying to you today that who is still held captive by sin and Satan, except Jesus Christ, as I say again, he is your jet get out of jail card. All right. He's the only way to be free 
from sin's captivity. God the Father didn't create you to be held captive by sin. Mm -hmm. We were created in his image and likeness to have an intimate, close relationship with him and to restore that relationship that sin broke. He gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. All we have to do is accept him and we share, be saved. Now to the broken heart are those who are failing to hear when Jesus said, cast all your cares upon me and I will take care of them. We have failed to believe when Jesus said, come to me who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. We are failing to hear when he said, take my yoke upon me and learn from me because I'm gentle, I'm humble in heart and in me you will find rest for your weary soul. If you're broken heart at this moment, come to Jesus, give him your problems. He will, He'll lighten your burdens. He'll take care of all of your kids. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Say that. Yes, Lord. Forgive me. Let's give it to Jesus. Yes. He'll heal your broken heart. Yes, yes Lord. Yes, yes. He'll lighten your burdens. Yes, he Because when he said to take your burdens to him, he's willing and he's able. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He'll, he'll fix it. Yes. He asked us, just give our problems to him. Boy. He's the only one mm -hmm. can fix it. <laughs> When yes. you overcome the weary and the burden of this world, yes. just remember to take him to the Lord and pray. Oh, yeah. He hears and he answers. Yes, he does. Just yes, turn it over to Jesus. Yes. Let me just take a moment and talk to those who are uh, there is covering from the sight from the blind. They are the ones who have removed their spiritual glasses and have put on the dark glasses of sin and are now seeing things oh, yeah. through the eyes of Satan and the world. But I'm here to tell you, take off your dark glasses of sin. All right. Put back on your spiritual glasses and see Jesus through our spiritual eyes. Oh, yeah. His spiritual invitation is still open. Then come unto me, all of who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I want you to see things as God the Father sees us. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Oh, yeah. You will, and you are sure of eternal life. Let me just say this. You cannot sink so low in sin that where God, the Father, cannot reach down and pick you up, as I say so nicely sometimes. When we are under the bridge, covered with sin, oh, yeah. God the Father sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Yes. He went to the cross for our sin. So all your sins has been forgiven, but you have to accept Jesus Christ as your savior. And, and accepting Jesus Christ as our savior. 
we have a renewed relationship with God. So Jesus Christ is our redeemer. He had bought and paid our sin debt. And we owe it all to Christ for where we are and for who we are. If we've been saved, we are children of God. We are no longer sins of Satan to be tossed back and forth like the winds or the waves of the sea. And if we are not saved, I encourage you today to accept Jesus Christ and have your anchor, your soul anchored in Christ. Yes. Because he's unmovable and he's unshakable. Because hmm. he's a solid rock of our lives. And he cannot be removed. Oh, yeah. Except Jesus Christ. Let me say to the last group, God has anointed me to preach to those who needs to be set at liberty, do need to be free okay. because they are bruised. God wants me to tell you that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to set you free from sin and shame. You are free through God, Christ's anointing work on Calvary's cross. Okay. And if you accept him as your personal savior, your sins have to give him. Jesus Christ was bruised for our iniquity, yours and mine. God the Father placed his chastisement upon his son so that you and I would not have to face God's punishment. In closing, I want to say this. Jesus Christ paid our sin day. Mm -hmm. All is left for you to do is to accept him as your personal savior. He is our high priest and he's still making intercessions for you and I. Mm -hmm. And if I say this in closing, hear the preacher, be saved. God's spiritual invitation remains open. Come as you are, just as you are. Yes. You don't have to try to cleanse yourself of your sins because you can't. Hmm. Jesus done that through his shed blood. Just come to Jesus just as you are. Yes. So be saved. Let us pray. Dear kind Heavenly Father, I thank you for the message. And Lord, I just thank you for your spirit. I thank you for your spirit that moved me to tears. You know it all. Then Father, I, I thank you for this church growth, it is all because of where you brought it. And for I, Lord, I thank you for all who join, whether in person on Zoom or via YouTube or Facebook, however, they came to hear a message from you. I'm just your spokesperson. And I, Father, I thank you in advance for answering this prayer as we go forward in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. And amen. 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 God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. I, I thank you all. This concludes.